We can all agree that e-bikes are incredible for daily commuting, but the biggest problem everyone eventually has with e-bikes is the maintenance. Because e-bikes are more complex, it sometimes feels like you need a mechanical engineering degree just to do simple maintenance on some e-bikes. The company Electric just introduced their most advanced e-bike that has semi-automatic shifting, is engineered to be ridden daily, comes in at an affordable price, and requires almost no maintenance. Check this out. How's it going guys? It's Andrew from Freshly Charged here in Tempe, Arizona. Checking out the brand new Electric The One. It's a sweet bike. It's something that I've never seen before. It's got a Gates carbon belt drive paired with a pinion system. And so this thing is sweet and moderately priced because it is offered by Electric. But let's check it out. I've had all day to ride around on it, visit the city, check out this cool community that's right behind me called Cul-de-Sac, the first carless community out there. Yeah, I've got my number one fan as you can see. Well, I think he's my number one fan. He doesn't really have a choice right now. But let's go ahead and check out this bike. I'm gonna go over some things that I like about it, some things that I don't like about it quite yet, and who I think this should be for. First off, this thing is an incredible value for what they've got going on here. It's got the Gates carbon belt drive mixed with the pinion semi-automatic system, and this bike should cost at least four to even possibly $13,000 for some of the components that you see on this. There's very few bikes that actually have these two components, and they're typically a lot more expensive. So let's check out the components that I'm talking about. First thing you notice is the beautiful color display. You can see this easily with polarized sunglasses. Really happy that Electric has brought a color display because something that I've been asking them to do for the past couple of years. You have the control module for the pedal assist levels. A throttle is on the left side. That is different. We have seen a thumb throttle on the X-Peak, but we haven't seen it on the previous bikes. They've always been that half twist throttle. I think it's actually safer to have a thumb throttle because half twist throttles, when you go to move the bikes, you can accidentally pull on the throttle and it can get away from you. The other thing we have is hydraulic brake levers and an electric shifter. This is the electric shifter for the pinion smart shifter and you can hear it changing gears. And this is a semi-automatic shifter. It will automatically shift for you. You don't have to adjust it if you don't want to, so you really don't need those controls, but it's nice to have that control if you don't love what gear you're in. Rubber grips with these wing tips on there. The phone holder is an extra accessory, but I assume that they're gonna be giving you one for free with your purchase because you have to use an app to control some of the settings with that pinion smart shift system. You can actually adjust the angle and rotate the handlebar. So if you don't like the handlebar angle, you can rotate that and you can also adjust the stem. So really cool that you have full adjustability and it's toolist. Really nice cable management, a foldable neck, some rivets so you can hang a basket. Front light is wired through the fender. So we have not seen this before in electric bike. Still not a big fan of this light, not super bright, but I do love that they've hidden the cables inside of the fender and it's a metal fender. 20 by two and a half inch Xiaoyang street tire. Really nice, soft and grippy. And it also has the hippo skin technology so it should prevent you from getting more flats. 180 millimeter brake disc with two piston hydraulic brakes. Nice big through axle, reflective strip. This front fork is designed in house. And they've also designed it that if you wanna upgrade and swap it out for a front fork suspension, the bike should work perfectly fine. Moving down the frame, you have the smart shift system from Pinion. Nice spiky metal pedals, which is what we see on the X-Peak. Option to upgrade this battery to a 20 amp hour battery, so do like that. And the Gates carbon belt drive system. So beautiful system, very low maintenance. You really have to do little to no maintenance on this bike. Adjustable seat height, rack, and a 750 watt motor that peaks at 1,310 watts. You can get up to 28 miles per hour. I'm sure you could actually go faster, but I know that Electric's legal team has got a hold of this bike and they cap out all their bikes at 28 miles per hour now. You do have another metal fender with a light built in, and this is the first bike that Electric has made that this converts to a brake light. Quick disconnect for easy servicing if you ever do get a flat tire. 180 millimeter brake disc with two piston hydraulic brakes. This rack, I'm not sure what the weight limit is, but my guess is about 60, 65 pounds. Overall, the bike is nice and compact. 
I was really surprised by the power weight ratio. This thing is incredible because it doesn't weigh very much. I think it's like 55 pounds and this thing packs a punch. If you actually adjust the P settings with the throttle, the front end will come up on you if you adjust the P settings for the maximum torque that this bike can offer. So really incredible how fast you can get this thing going. I'm gonna go ahead and ride around cul-de-sac with all the other content creators that are here. There's a lot of people that are really fun to hang out with. And then I'm gonna tell you what I love about it, what I hate about it, and if you should buy the electric one. So let's talk about some things I love about this. The Gates carbon belt drive, that's the first thing that sticks out to you paired with the pinion smart shift system. Really sweet stuff, awesome technology. Felt a little bit awkward at first, I'll be honest with you. When I first got on this bike, I felt like it was a little bit clunky, didn't really know what to expect, but then what I found out was I just needed to adjust the settings. There's so many different parameters that you can adjust and you can dial this in for your exact type of riding style. So that is what's amazing about this, is it's not just one size fits all, it's not like adjust a couple things, it's adjust whatever you want on this bike to make it yours. So that's one thing that is great about it. And the second thing is the cost, holy cow. If you were to go to a bike shop and try to get this incorporated in just a bike yourself, you're gonna be spending at least $3,000 for those two systems. And that's actually a cheap offering. Some people may not even charge you four or $5,000 just for that. So awesome, kudos to them. Other thing I love about it is they brought a color display. Welcome to 2024 Electric. I've been asking you guys for a couple years about this. I'm happy it has finally arrived. Other thing I love about it is we don't have a Shimano Tourney Derailleur anymore. I've been asking them to get rid of the Shimano Tourney Derailleurs. You can always pay like 30, 40, 50 bucks to get your own derailleur and swap it out. Then you're gonna have to pay for labor or you can do it yourself. I'm glad that this bike does not have it. I do love this adjustable neck. This neck is amazing. One of the best things out there is that you can quickly adjust it for different types of heights. You can also fold it down with the neck to make it more compact. Also hidden cables. I love that they've hidden those inside of the fender. Some of these have a little teeny tiny through axle bolt. So I do like that nice and thick one. I love that they've chosen Xiaoyang tires. They're just soft and grippy. They're a lot better than CST BFT tires. The other thing is, is they're puncture resistance because they have that hippo skin layer on them. So it's an air mad layer, which helps prevent flats and punctures. Great stopping power. I've had zero issues with that. Paired with the Xiaoyang tires that have nice, soft, grippy texture, they work very well. These are a lot of the things that I like about it. There is a few things that I don't like about it. So I'm gonna ride around and at my next stop, I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about this bike. So what don't I like about the electric one? First things for me is I wish it did have suspension. The other thing for me is the shifting can be weird sometimes. You can dial it in, but there is some times where it just shifts on me and I don't love the way it's shifting. I wish the auto shifting was just a little bit more refined because just like when I was coming in here, it just shifted on me last second and just felt kind of awkward rather than naturally shifting. Oh, the other thing for me is this front light is terrible. It's really bad. I've never been a huge fan of it. Even their upgraded light is pretty bad. I wish they could resolve that issue with the lighting. Been trying to think of what else I don't like about this bike, but those are pretty much it. Overall, it's a sweet deal and who should buy this bike? Someone who really likes a really finely crafted machine looking for high quality components at a budget-friendly price. What's your first initial impressions? Oh, dude, the torque on this is insane. <laughs> insane. It's insane. 